The purpose of a barrel crown on a rifle is one important element in the makeup of a precision rifle. An imperfect or damaged crown can certainly cause a marked decrease in accuracy. Expanding gases propelling a bullet through the bore are naturally moving faster than the bullet. And once the bullet clears the bore, those expanding gases start to envelop the bullet, but rapidly slow down because of drag. And if for some reason those gases are interrupted, like for example a crown that is dinged or dented, the gases are not able to leave the bore in a concentric manner. The turbulated gases may then push the bullet off a stable trajectory. In these clips I decided to play with food dye and a hunk of barrel in my kitchen. In the first clip is a barrel with a flat crown. Notice the gases are leaving the bore straight out. The second clip is with an 11 degree crown. Notice the difference? Yeah, neither did I. Now, it's important to note that my state-of-the-art fish tank food dye fluid dynamic chamber may not be perfectly calibrated. And I can just read the hateful YouTube comments now. How my test was stupid and doesn't prove anything. And that's all perfectly true. So, I decided to do some internet research. Most shooters know that many barrels are crowned with an 11 degree target crown. But why 11 degrees? Why not 10.36 or 13.1? I set out to find out where the infamous 11 degree crown originated. My first thought was that an 11 degree crown may allow ambient air to move in and around the accelerating gases so as to not cause unnecessary turbulence. And the recess of the 11 degree crown also allows some protection to the point where the crown meets the bore. And after countless hours on the internet, trying to find where the infamous 11 degree crown came from, I concluded one thing. No one really knows. Now some say it was from an old-timey gunsmith who probably decided 11 degrees sounded just obscure enough for people to buy into. I mean, think about it. 10 degrees just sounds silly. Others said that the AMU, that is the Army Marksmanship Unit, cut crowns into a barrel one degree at a time. 11 degrees was apparently the best. This sounded somewhat believable to me, so I emailed the AMU and found out... nothing. And I never got an email back. So, the truth of the matter is, I could not find anyone who could provide solid proof of the origins of the 11 degree crown. And I don't think the guy posting on the internet about what his old Uncle Barry's friend said is a reliable source on this matter. But, is 11 degrees really the best? Well, the truth is, it doesn't really matter. Plenty of match-winning rifles have flat crowns. Many perfectly good shooting hunting rifles have recessed crowns. Now it's important to note that a damaged crown can cause a rifle's accuracy to suffer. In 1909, Dr. Mann tested if objects in front of a muzzle would affect the bullet's accuracy. With a piece of wood only 1 16th of an inch from the bore, Dr. Mann claimed that the accuracy of the rifle was not affected. And you can read more in Dr. Mann's book, The Bullet's Flight, From Powder to Target. And in the online magazine, Long Range Hunting, Alan Marshall experimented with a Model 70's crown. At one point, he purposely cuts a notch into the rifle's crown where it meets the bore without any ill effects, and in some cases, somehow, improved the accuracy of the rifle. Marshall goes on to explain that he will continue to produce rifles with perfect crowns. He says he will wait to see how the rifle shoots before judging anyone who does a hacksaw and file crowning job. Now, I subscribe to the thinking that barrel crowns can greatly affect a rifle's accuracy. But what is most important is the precise area where the bore meets the crown, and gases can either come out concentric or push the bullet a bit more or less in one direction. Now, does that mean that all rifles will suffer the same symptoms from a damaged crown? Certainly not. We live in the real world. But some rifles will suffer accuracy loss from a damaged crown, and others simply won't. The whole thing starts by first removing the three-jaw chuck, which has jaws that move together, to the four-jaw chuck that has jaws that move independently from each other. The barrels then placed through the lathe's headstock, and brass shims are placed in between the barrel and the jaws to protect the barrel from any marring. The barrel must now be indicated into zero. And as you can see in this clip, that if I tried to put a crown on the barrel without zeroing the bore to the lathe's center axis, the crown would be way off. You can also see the barrel wobble around the straight line on the paper, proving that it is nowhere near zero. A similar thing would happen, but likely not to the extreme, if I tried crowning the barrel using the three-jaw chuck. 
The three-jaw chuck simply does not allow for the bore of the barrel to be indicated as zero for two reasons. First, the bore is never centered in a barrel. It is always off-centered, even in a top-tier barrel. Secondly, the three-jaw chuck does not allow for independent adjustment of each jaw so that the bore can be zero to the lay's center axis. The barrel is indicated into zero by using a precision ground range rod, a bushing that just fits the barrels placed onto the range rod. The rod is then placed into the tailstock of the lathe. The tailstock is precisely zeroed into the lathe's center axis, and by placing the range rod into the tailstock, a precise measurement can be achieved. Jacking screws are then placed into the spider, which is located on the opposite side of the chuck. This allows the barrel to be zeroed lengthwise, as well as side to side. With the range rod inside the barrel about three inches, the barrel can now be zeroed using the four-jaw chuck. Once zero is found, the range rod can be backed off to about half an inch. The needle on the dial test indicator will most likely be nowhere near zero. The jacking screws will be used this time to find zero. The range rod is then again advanced about three inches in the barrel, and the four-jaw chuck is used to find zero again. This process will need to be repeated until the indicator reads zero on both the outboard and inboard readings. Once the indicator reads zero on both ends, the barrel is zero to the lathe center axis. Next, the compound rest of the lathe is set to 11 degrees. The tool post will then need to be set square to the work. A facing cut is made to the barrel to ensure that the work is starting from a flat surface and to be sure all of the old crown is removed. It is important that the tool is moved from the inside out so that a burr is not rolled into the bore of the barrel. Finally, the compound rest set at 11 degrees can be used to create the barrel crown. A light chamfer can be placed on the outside of the barrel to make the crowning job easy on the eyes. Once the crown has been cut, a Q-tip can be used to identify any burrs on the inside of the bore. If any cotton is pulled from the Q-tip, a burr is there and the crown will need to be recut. Some people use a very small 45 degree chamfer from the bore to the crown to ensure that there is no burr. I did not use a 45 degree chamfer, but if you search the internet, pictures can be seen of what one looks like.